That's kind of what I wanted this place to be, Casa de Sueños is like a house of dreams. It's like, you know, when you step through that gate and you drive through that gate, you know, you're leaving the modern world out there, you know. I'm very comfortable here. Like I said before, when you, when you drive through those gates, you know, it is, uh, for me, my dream. It's like you're coming through another time, you know, it's... Uh, I have the horses, I, uh, uh, huh. a lot of times I'll be out here and I'll be shooting like my bow and arrow, I, you know, it's the time of, of, of rest and that I, re, I refill myself because when I'm out on the road I'm emptying myself or if I'm creating an album, uh, my creative juices are flowing and I empty it all out so I come back here to refill and uh, I can leave uh, Willie DeVille on stage and all the business and the bullshit and and if I'm gonna think uh, creative it's gonna be art and it's gonna be music you know I can get away from the business and the, hey you gotta be on stage you know blah 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 time and you know we pull in with the gear and you know you have an hour to take a shower and do your hair and put your suit on and go on stage and then we're gonna leave the hotel at such and such a time and you gotta get on a plane you know that's the way I, o I always am, so when I can stop all that, it's, it's, it's heaven. Muchos colosones le caí. Para la vivo.
That's the quiet life. <laughs> uh, I spend so much time on the road, so much time in hotels, in, in playing with the band that uh, when I come home, I, I, I'm just kind of satisfied to be with the horses, you know. And uh, in a place like this, I can stop and keep track of all my impressions. Right? Uh, I wanted to have a place where I didn't Boutique. feel uh, like in New York, you know, I always felt like I had to be Willie DeVille if I walked out in the street, you know. See, Mom's, Here, Mom's I, I dress for my horses. <laughs> it's okay. Come on. It's okay. Come on, see. Come on, see. There you go. Good girl. I mean, this is, this is no real big deal. It, it's just that after doing this for 20 years, I think I deserve a house, you know. This, you know uh, <laughs> uh, I really don't think I want to be Johnny Thunders, you know. I don't want to die in a hotel room, you know. Lisa did something to me. I don't know what it was, but uh, uh, it, it was it was uh, that woman's touch, man. I don't know. At the end of the day, it's no secret I was addicted to morphine for many years, many years, uh, for uh, a lot of the first part of my career. Uh, but I found a drug that's better. I fell in love, you know. And there is a saying that the only thing that'll cure an old junkie is, is a woman. And uh, that's what happened to me. You know, if, if that hadn't happened, I probably, we would have been doing this in the, the uh, Chelsea, and I would have probably said to you, well, I can't do this unless you can give me a hundred bucks, and I would have ran down the street and come back, and I would have been fine. <laughs> you know, but uh, the only experience I have at feeling really torn apart like this is this is this is the the uh this is the the uh glamour world of junkies is bullshit if anybody thinks it's glamorous or uh, i'll tell you you know being a junkie is just like being a vampire and there's nothing glamorous in it you know when they take your coffin away you've had it that's it and i you know when they used to take my coffin away you're sick and nobody will understand it. You can't go anywhere. You can't go to a doctor. Doctors, you're junkie. I can't give you dope. Are you crazy? Your friends, if you've hit them up for money, they're going to say, man, you're still doing this thing. I can't give you any more money. And if they don't know about it and you tell them about it, you've got the plague. It's like, Jesus, you're a... You, really? That's... You really... Stick a needle in you, you do that. I mean, you shock everybody, and nobody wants to, a junkie. Nobody wants a junkie. You're, you're, you, you have the plague. You're like a vampire. Nobody wants you. Nobody wants you. No, you won't ever find a sympathetic ear. 
except for another junkie. Uh, it, it was, it was uh, that woman's touch, man. I don't know. It just it did something. I don't know. It was magic. And, you know, then you realize, too, that not everybody gets that. Not everybody gets that. Love is a, a, a thing that a few of us are fortunate enough to run into. A lot of people go through their whole life and they never run into that. Some people run into it and they throw it out the frickin' window. And then when it comes down to it later, they go, oh my God, what did I do? Sometimes I feel when I can't go on It gets so hard to keep holding on Somebody who worked at Capitol Records called me during that CBGB scene, and uh, he 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 played me Mink Deville, and he said of all the CBGBs, uh, all these groups, he said I think this is the best bunch, and so I went to New York to see him, and uh, we got along right away. I mean, you know, Willie really lived like an artist, and you know he. He was really soulful, and he, we, we played records all night, and we all, we loved all kinds of different records. We just hit it off. It was like we were soul brothers, and we still are. To walk in the studio,